There we go. Wonderful. Um, so uh, a very warm welcome indeed um, from me to all of you uh, to this uh, first webinar for 2021 in this ongoing series organized by the IASC MHPSS reference groups working group on uh, mental health, psychosocial support and peace building. I'll tell you a little bit more about the working group in a moment, but I'm uh, especially pleased to be hosting a very interesting contribution today from a research team based at uh, Kabul University in Afghanistan. Um, yes, next slide, please. Thanks, uh, Quentin. Uh, and also at uh, Hunter College, uh, City University of New York. Our colleagues from Kabul University and their counterparts uh, at Herat University have carried out this work under very difficult circumstances, and we are very grateful that they're able to um, share this with us today. Um, the opportunity has been facilitated by their collaborator and our very own working group colleague, uh, Professor Martha Bracken, who will be introducing their collective work today. Next slide, please. Um, for those of you who are not perhaps familiar with the ISC reference group on MHPSS, um, this was established, uh, a group established uh, under the auspices of ISC, um, which is a uh, part of the global humanitarian infrastructure led by the UN um, and consists of more than 50 members at present um, and fosters a, a, a unique collaboration between uh, NGOs, the UN, international agencies uh, and academics uh, and seeks to promote best practices in MHPSS. Its main task is to advocate for and support the implementation of the 2007 ISC guidelines on MHPSS in emergency settings. Um, and, and to do this and to extend its work, the reference group works through a number of thematic working groups to facilitate the development and dissemination of guidance on specific areas of NHGSS. Next slide, please. Um, so the work um, and, 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 and the webinar today is brought to you by um, the working group uh, on MHPSS and peace building, which was uh, established in uh, February 2019, which is currently co-chaired by GIZ and UNFPA, and has a number of members from within the, uh, uh, the MHPSS uh, reference group, uh, but also by invitation other members from within the wider peace building uh, community that may not be a part of the, um, uh, the, the reference group per se. And the, and the current aim of this working group is to try and find ways of strengthening linkages between these two fields through the development of practical guidance or tools and through the facilitation of technical discussions and exchanges. And that um, second part really is uh, what brings us here today. Uh, and I'd like to hand over now um, to um, our, my colleague, uh, Martha, um, to introduce the webinar uh, that she has been uh, so kind to, as to organize um, for the working group and for the research team that uh, she's been working with. Over to you, Martha. Martha, we will need to unmute you. You're still muted, I'm afraid, Martha. I think that's it. Go ahead. So I'm so happy to be here today with my wonderful colleagues from Kabul University to introduce this webinar on peace, love, and justice lessons from contemporary Afghanistan on the irrevocable link between psychosocial well-being and peace based on research that we were that I was privileged to accompany. Next slide. So the team consisted of Kabul University deans uh, Saturudin Siddiqui, I hope I pronounce everybody's name correctly, and the Kabul-based PI Mariam Ahmadi, also chair of the counseling department, uh, along with many of her colleagues, of whom uh, Rehana Bakari, associate professor of the counseling department, Spojmai Oria, also associate professor, and Rohina Zafari, 
from the faculty social work department. Not with us today are the team from Herat University led by Dean Bashir Ahmad Karam Harimi and the Herat based PI uh, psychiatrist, Dr. Hadi Rasuli, chair of department Basir Ahmad Azizi. Here in Silverman School of Social Work, I, we are being assisted today by my trusty and very brave assist, research graduate assistants, Tenzin Bhutia and Rula Hajar. Next slide. And that's Tenzin changing slides for us. So, beginning. A lifetime of trauma. One of the hidden realities in Afghanistan is the consequence of more than 30 years of war. No one escapes its effects. The death of loved ones, personal injuries, destruction of homes and families, and shattered lives. Higher education must not only produce students who will have the training, knowledge, creativity, entrepreneurial talents, and citizenship skills to provide for their own well being and help foster national development, but also ensure that the traumas and other legacies of the violence and carnage of war are adequately addressed. Those are the words of Chancellor Dr. Asman ba Barbary. Um, and again, Chancellor of Kabul University, please change the slide. I think Rohina will begin with the background. Professor Rohina, are you there? We cannot unmute ourselves. Someone has to unmute us. No, uh, Martha, you have to unmute yourself. Um, I was not able to do it until I got no. uh, a link from Marcio to do it. Okay. Well. If you can enable that feature so that we can hear Professor Rohina. One moment. Oh, she's not co-host, so I just, if she's not co-host, just change it uh, and she can now yep. you mute herself. I have made Rohina co-host, she can mute herself. I want to say uh, what happened from 2001 till now in Afghanistan, the background. In December Rohina, we may not be able to hear you very clearly. You may have to speak up. Thank you. Loudly, slowly for everyone. Okay. I want to explain what happened from 2001 till now in Afghanistan, the background of this study. In December 2001, the Afghan interim authority took over governance, preceding civil wars had destroyed nearly all infra infrastructure, closed public services, and created conditions of consistent random violence and insecurity. Over 3.5 million refugees had fled the country and 965,000 persons were internally displaced. Record levels of malnutrition, infectious diseases, maternal and infant mortality prevailed. Epidemiological studies uh, indicated high preval prevalence rates of mental illness, including depression and anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. The new Afghan authority moved quickly to address these issues. Schools opened on schedule in March 2002, welcoming 3 million students. The Ministry of Public Health set out to reduce mortality and infectious diseases through the, uh, through the creation of basic package of health services available at countrywide community clinics. The basic package of health services included essential mental health services and the public health system embarked on an ambitious program to train both medical professionals, paraprofessional health workers, and mental health workers to treat serious and persistent mental illness and severe cases of post-traumatic stress disorder. Next slide, please. 
In ensuing years, conflict, drought, and economic difficulties worsened. With them came to myriad daily stressors inhabiting Afghanistan progress in all areas of development. By that time, 80% of Afghans visiting mental health clinic exhibited emotional distress, not related to psychiatric illness, but rather the result of adversity related stressors that overwhelmed the protective, uh, uh, protective factors that might have mitigated them in better time requiring psychosocial support. As a part to this, the Ministry of Higher Education called the establishment of academic departments of psychological counseling that could prepare Afghan professionals to address the psychosocial effect of the stressors at individual, family, group, and community levels. In non-medical cultural, uh, in non-medical cultural re relevant group and community uh, focus methods were to be initiated. Local standards of a psychosocial well-being beyond individual diagnosis provided by the ICD-10 classification were required so that these standards could not be used to evaluate program effectiveness. The, this webinar discusses the resulting uh, phenomenological study conducted by team educators from the counseling department of Herat University in Kabul University to define, operationalize the concept of psychosocial well-being. Thank you. Professor Rehana. Marcio, you will need to unmute her. I actually can't do that, Marta, but is she a co-host? Yeah. Hi, everyone. The study location of Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a diverse country divided into 34 provinces and seven regions. The Ministry of Higher Education versus Afghanistan, 39 public universities and colleges and managed campuses in each region of the country. The research took place at Ministry of Higher Education facilities and four of the country's uh, seven regions. The facilities were located at Kabul University, Herat University, Balkh University, and Kandahar University. Security concerns prevented planned visits to university centers in the northeast, northwest and east. Next. Next slide about the study participants. The study engaged 440 participants, 187 women, and 253 men and 58 focus groups. They created among organizations that provided or educated uh, practitioners in mental health education, child protection, women's rights, Justice, uh, uh, addiction, read, recent volunteers, and uh, specialists in Islamic and traditional counseling. Care was taken to include those who work with disabled uh, persons, persons from uh, excluded uh, groups, and participants representing as many as possible of the uh, groups in Afghanistan, uh, propos uh, proportionally, proportionally of their presence in the population. Thanks. Now my colleague, Professor Maria Mahmadi, talk about the methodology. Uh, hello, everyone. 
Uh, I want to speak about the methodology approaches of this study. Uh, this study was participatory uh, phenomenological and the study was designed to learn how the concept of psychosocial well-being are understood and uh, operationalized in the in contemporary Afghanistan. Uh, the two main uh, research questions were how do Afghans understand psychological well-being? Uh, what language do people use to express well-being as a feeling? How do they operationalize the language of well-being? The second question was, what are the conditions that study participants believe are necessary to achieve a feeling of uh, well-being? Next slide. Uh, this was a participatory uh, phenomenological study of the subjective views of psychosocial well-being uh, among uh, uh, people who work with conflict-affected area. Uh, the team used two uh, methodological approaches. Um, uh, the first one was a stepwise ethnographic uh, exploration. And the next one was uh, a participatory uh, ranking uh, method, which were selected uh, following their successful adaptation in similar context. Uh, also, the study conducted in two rounds, uh, with the first consisting of uh, a free listing and discussion, followed by the research team meeting to analyze the data, the data and organize it into general domain categories. They are all then operationalized, then focus groups meet again, this time including some uh, new members. Uh, they reviewed the domains for accuracy and corrected or challenge or change them, uh, them if required. They then used the participatory ranking to uh, prioritize the results in a process that called uh, qualitative concept wow. validation. And uh, now my colleague, uh, Espojmai Uriya will introduce the result and the domains of the study. Um. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, according to the results of this study, uh, uh, psychosocial well being is a concept imported for use by uh, uh, international community in practice, is mostly associated with responses to adversity. But in this uh, research, defining what's really meant to be well, uh, both uh, psychologically and socially, uh, uh, was quite new for the participants and uh, in this study uh, the result and the result we found nine operationalized domains that uh, comprise psychosocial well-being for men and women uh, respectively and uh, also uh, the result of this study identified a glossary of terms uh, uh, both in Dari and Pashto which are the official language of uh, Afghanistan. Next slide. Uh, so, uh, uh, in this uh, study, uh, as I said before, uh, we found nine uh, domains for men and women. Uh, uh, the first uh, domain for the women participant is peace, security, and justice. And its indicators are uh, to have uh, continuous peace in the society, to have no armed conflict or war, to have equal rights as women, 
and to be free of all discrimination such as ethnic, gender, uh, religious, and class. Um, and also to have a society based on universal respect for civil law and justice and to have a society free from corruption. The second domain for the women participant is love and support in the family uh, and its indicators are to have a supportive and loving relationship uh, with all family members, to have equal love for daughters and sons, to have a trust and approval from family members, to have a mutually respected and loving marriage, uh, to know that are happy as well and well and to be honest uh, with one another within the family uh, for all family members to live together in a mutual respect and harmony and also the last uh, indicator for this domain is when family members disagree in an issue in the family uh, they find uh, solutions by peaceful means through uh, discussion the third domain is freedom and the freedom indicators are uh, to have freedom within Islamic structure. And uh, we found the uh, dari term for the Islamic structure, Chaukat Islami, in this uh, research. And also another indicator is to be accepted by others, to live uh, without the constant fear of accusations and criticism on the street, in the workplace, in home, to have freedom of movement, to move uh, freely at home, work, or in the streets without harassment, without judgment and uh, treat. And another indicator is to speak and write what one thinks and believes. Um, and another indicator for this domain is to be respected for one's religious beliefs and uh, expressions. Uh, another domain is uh, economic security or access to uh, resources. Uh, its indicators are to be economically secure, uh, to have access to necessities of life, uh, such as to uh, have uh, access to job opportunities, to have access to uh, education, and uh, uh, to have knowledge and uh, education, access to job opportunities, to free from, uh, free to contribute to economic well being of the family. Uh, without having the morality of one's efforts uh, question. Next slide, slide, please. Okay. Uh, another uh, domain for the women participant is uh, participation in uh, cultural and religious practices. That's indicators are to uh, participate in cultural traditions, festivals um, that bring people together, such as weddings, holidays. And uh, another uh, indicator is to be able to fully participate in religious festivals, sharing the responsibility of cooking, cleaning, and providing others uh, to help others in need, uh, to have a religious faith and personal relationship with Almighty Allah, uh, to practice uh, formal and ritual uh, daily players, uh, prayers and to have one's individual expression of religious and culture respected in one's uh, uh, practice and in one's uh, dress, way of dressing. Uh, the, another domain for the woman participant is uh, friendship and support outside the family. And its indicators are to spend time with friends and mutual support, uh, to make others feel good by supporting them, to have a respectful, honest, and trustworthy friendship, uh, to receive prize for one's work in the workplace, uh, to be able to make important contributions at work uh, or in the society. Uh, another domain is self-efficacy or self-esteem, and its indicators are uh, to be able to adapt, change, or survive any uh, difficulty, uh, to achieve one's goals, and to uh, uh, and responsibilities and to have confidence in one's abilities to be effective in one's uh, uh, actions at home or at work. Uh, another uh, domain for the woman participant is uh, leisure activities or time to enjoy living and its indicators are to follow personal interests such as arts, study, makeup, uh, shopping, and etc. Um, uh, to practice in women's groups activities 
such as sports, reading, uh, reading groups, music and dancing, uh, and dancing according to the cultural uh, uh, tradition and uh, uh, to enjoy humor and laughter, to be able to travel, to go to park, green places and uh, have a picnic. And the last uh, domain for the women participant uh, is physical health and its indicator is to be physically healthy. Uh, next slide, next slide please. And the uh, domain for the main participant, the first domain is uh, also um, peace, security, and justice for, for main participant. Its indicators are uh, to have ongoing peace, security, and safety, to have law and order in the society with no corruption, to have uh, societal acceptance of people's differences, to have uh, respect for everyone's human values, civil and human rights, uh, to have unity in the country. Second domain for the uh, main participants uh, is economic security or the ability to provide for the family. And its indicators are to be economically secure, to have a steady job with job security or to have access to uh, uh, necessary uh, resources, to have all basic needs fulfilled for the self and family and to be able to support one's uh, family. Another domain for the main participant is strong family relation support. And its indicators are to have unity within the family, to have mutual respect, uh, respect and kindness within the family, and to have a strong marriage. Uh, the next uh, domain for the main participant is independent power and authority. And its indicators are to have power and authority, to be independent, to have freedom of thought, expression and spirituality, to be free to access and ask for civil and human rights. Uh, another domain is friendship and solidarity outside the, uh, the family. It's indicated to spend time with friends and colleagues, uh, to have uh, uh, trustworthy and honorable friends, uh, to share thoughts with them and experiences, uh, share experiences with them and to participate in nighttime gatherings uh, of the same sex friends. Uh, and it's, it's daddy term is Shab uh, Nishini. And uh, another indicator for this domain is to be respected and appreciated in the workplace and community. And uh, another indicator is to participate in community governance, including Shura, the Dari Tam or Jaga, the Pashto Tam for this. Uh, so next slide. Uh, the next domain for the main participant is religious observance. Its indicators is, uh, are uh, to engage in religious observance, such as uh, to participate in religious practices, such as prayer, attending mosque, attending funerals, making hajj. And another indicator is to help one another through hush or zakat, uh, uh, to have religious faith, such as trust in Allah, a personal uh, relationship with Allah. And uh, the next domain for the main participant is successful fulfillment of obligations. And it is uh, indicators uh, are to, to set and reach one's goals, uh, to have the ability to solve problems and overcome hardships, to do one's best, to provide support to one's tribe or community. Uh, the next domain is uh, leisure activities and its indicators are to participate in active and outdoor uh, leisure activities, such as to play sports, to go to park and green uh, places and have a picnic. Uh, another indicator is to participate in social leisure activities, playing games, to uh, going to parties and play with friends and uh, kids and family, and uh, to participate in creative, artistic uh, leisure activities, uh, reading, writing, uh, recite poetry and yeah. The next domain is uh, participation in cultural practices and its indicators uh, uh, are to participate in cultural practices uh, such as cultural traditions and festivals to honor and uh, promote Afghan culture uh, uh, within communities and other uh, countries and to uh, revise cultural practices that bring challenge uh, to people. 
And uh, uh, the next uh, domain is uh, personal capabilities and uh, uh, its indicators uh, are uh, to be honest, uh, respectful and accepting, uh, to be patient, to be realistic and thankful uh, for what one has in life, uh, to be hopeful and uh, uh, optimistic, to have self-awareness and self-confidence and to be uh, physically healthy. Uh, so next slide, slide please. Next. Uh, so uh, regarding to the domain in this study, uh, we found that in this study, both men and uh, women uh, ranked peace and justice as, an, as a first priority uh, for psychosocial well-being and security and peace were seen as uh, only possible uh, when, uh, with justice for all. And for women uh, participants in this study, peace and justice was understood as a condition of persistent uh, uh, societal peace uh, uh, with a long-term uh, 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 peace and not a short-term uh, ceasefire, uh, uh, as well as uh, lawfulness and end of corruption, protection of rights. And for men, peace means a unified nation coupled with respect for human values and the rights of peoples combined with lawful society without uh, corruption. Uh, so uh, these were the end of the uh, domains for the men and women participants. And now my colleague uh, Maria Mahmadi will uh, discuss the uh, peace building and well being uh, relationship. Thanks. And uh, uh, hello again to everyone. Uh, I want to discuss about the connection of uh, this uh, study with peace building in Afghanistan. Uh, the study indicated very, very important implications for uh, peace building in Afghanistan, uh, especially the domains of well being. Uh, in this study, such as uh, peace, security, justice, freedom, and uh, economic uh, security, all directly to uh, peace building, to a long lasting uh, peace in Afghanistan. Uh, all groups in the study allowed people to comment on and think uh, about the ideas of others. Uh, among participants and researchers uh, were people uh, who were traditionally uh, observant, secular, sh uh, Sunni, uh, Shia, uh, and non-Muslim. Uh, there were highly educated people and those who were only uh, minimally literate. Uh, but yet people were able to, to listen uh, to one another, uh, not comment other, and in many cases, uh, find a place of agreement uh, that could be included in the results of the study. Uh, several participants stated that this was as essential for Afghan culture. Uh, going back centuries and that taking time to hear uh, to other person was a key aspect of counseling in Afghan, in Afghan traditions. They discussed the imagining of a peaceful, comfortable life as an important uh, step for peace building in Afghanistan. And the uh, participant described the conditions of psychosocial well-being. They began to describe action uh, that would support this uh, state of mind, suggesting small steps uh, to peace building that they could take in their own lives. Next slide. 
Yes. Uh, thank you. Also, this study indicates uh, that Afghan who have been living in war for a generation uh, understand an uh, in inextricable connection between um, mental health and well-being and peace. Uh, especially in the uh, current situation in Afghanistan, that every day uh, we are witness of bombing, suicide attack, and uh, uh, lack of security. Uh, we can see the connection of uh, peace and the mental health of uh, people in Afghanistan. Also, the study uh, finds that across gender, ethnicities, religion, and political affiliation, the participants, uh, without being prompt, uh, connected peace, justice, and well-being. Uh, also, the results of this study challenge the assumption that mental social uh, support in conflict area uh, uh, should be exclusively focused on trauma treatment after the fact but suggested that communities uh, could take actions uh, to help uh, people's uh, well-being and uh, we found that uh, very a strong connection between peace building and uh, well-being in the study uh, thank you so much Okay, uh, hello, everybody. It's my pleasure time to see all of you. And uh, I want to speak about the conclusion or from study to action for steps. Following the study, Kabul University established a model counseling center, which should be replicated throughout the Ministry of Higher Education University system. The department uses the glossary of term and the concept from the study in practice and teaching future counselors. After the November 2nd, 2000, 20, attack, attack on Kobe University that killed 19 and wounded 22. The, counsel, the counseling center provided individual and group counseling. We also hope to serve at the center for peace building action as students say that they want to fight violence with, with knowledge and the pain. Counseling department faculty member Spojme Uriya engaged in the further research to understand how MHPSS and peace building could be practiced together. Thanks a lot from listening and thanks a lot from your attention. Oops. Martha, you thank are you, live. Uh, thank you, Dean Siddiqui. Thank you, colleagues. And thank all of you for your kind attention. At this moment, I believe that Ananda has been collecting some of your questions from the, uh, from the Q and A and will be able to share. Um, huh. Yes. I um, will be able thanks. to share those that exist, those that do not exist. Please do not hesitate, colleagues, to put your questions to us now. 
Yes, so one of the questions that we had was whether you faced any resistance from service users or providers when introducing peace building concepts in MHPSS. Um, given that this was a research study, uh, perhaps it was, uh, perhaps you could respond to that in, in terms of when you were raising the question of um, uh, what, what constitutes well being, was there an issue around the use of the term psychosocial, MHPSS, or peace building impact? Mariam, you want to yes. take that? Uh, Dr. Marta, I, I can't hear the question clear. Could you repeat again? Yeah. So the questioner is asked, the questioner, I think it's about the methodology. The questioner asks, was there resistance to our asking, introducing peace building. But Ananda points out that we did not introduce peace building, but perhaps you can answer also how the study was received by the participants. Is that a correct interpretation, Ananda? I think that's fine, yes. yes. I think the focus is especially on how you frame the study and the questions you asked. We but can also so go what? back to the ah, Rohina will answer. Yes? Or Stop Maria? The, 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 yes. Uh, استاد <laughs> Uh, yes, I got the question, and um, I I want to answer to that question. Uh, during the research, uh, we didn't uh, face any resistance from the participants of the research. Uh, they all were happy because this was the first time that uh, 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 practitioners and specialists of the area asking them about their well-being because before that they never uh, hear that some uh, part of their lives is, uh, is related to uh, well-being and uh, especially uh, psychosocial uh, well-being. And they were happy and they, they also, they eager uh, to talk about their uh, feelings. And they were uh, eager to uh, express their self. And um, I think we never, uh, uh, faced any resistance from the participants. Thank you so much, um, Professor Mariam. The one no, small uh, follow-up question from another um, uh, uh, colleague who appreciated the presentation very much, but said, and I quote her, um, I would love to learn more about the challenges or constraints that you faced. What are the key factors affecting your study? Regina, <laughs> John, you want to translate to make sure she gets all the points? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we also uh, I haven't faced any challenges during the study. Uh, the only challenge that we mentioned also in the study was some uh, security yeah. concerns uh, of going to uh, some parts of other parts of uh, Afghanistan. But uh, the regions that we went for uh, uh, collecting data, 
uh, we haven't faced any problem. Uh, we went to universities and we um, uh, get a letter uh, to them uh, that it was the uh, research permission. Uh -huh. uh, the, the participants um, uh, just they uh, because uh, they uh, didn't ask before that uh, how is their feeling and uh, or what's their feeling from the social psychosocial well-being. Some of them at, at first didn't know how express their feeling, but uh, after uh, discussing uh, with them and uh, explaining the well-being, uh, especially psychosocial well-being, uh, they were uh, able to express their feelings. Slowly, they understand how to express their feeling. And uh, uh, my colleague, Spurmay Uriya, want to add some in that question. So, I think that so, uh, as um, Maria Mahmadi said, the uh, challenge that we faced a lot during the focus groups was the uh, people didn't have the, uh, the ability to describe their feelings, uh, for, uh, especially the positive feelings. For example, the glossary that we found rahat or, or wrong. Uh, these were the, uh, the terms that we are using in our daily life. Uh, during discussions and the explaining for them, uh, so uh, this challenge was met and, uh, uh, and one of the results of this study is that we found uh, terminology for the well-being in the Afghan context. Thank you very much. We so have also a question um, from uh, colleague Brandon, uh, who says the indicator um, for well being, which was to revise cultural practices that bring challenge, I put it in the chat for you to see it, uh, is very interesting, really interesting. Could you say more about that indicator and how it was discussed? Yeah, uh, yeah. it was related to some cultural uh, traditions in our country. During the focus groups, we found that uh, our participants said, especially women, uh, said that some of our the cultural practices are good, but uh, it has uh, some challenges with us. For example, they said that during the Ramadan and during the eight festivals, it's good to receive and uh, uh, guests in the family and uh, survive them, but uh, this uh, this is only in part for women. And women, in, uh, instead of uh, 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 doing their spiritual uh, activities during the Ramadan, they they should provide for guests. Uh, or in the eat, they should provide for guests. They should cook and uh, some other, and also some of the. Uh, uh, cultural challenges like uh, child marriage and uh, forced marriage and some other things that they, uh, they said uh, during the focus group. So they said that uh, we, uh, our culture have some limitations. So uh, they uh, named that these uh, parts. Um, thank you. We also have another question that just came in. I also um, want to add on this. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in men's section also, they discussed about the revised cultural practices. When I was there in um, Herat University, the Islamic studies professors, they told that the, there is a misconception that uh, people think that if they uh, go to the marriage ceremonies or parties, people think that they because they are professors, they are not allowed to dance or they are not allowed to 
talk more or they are not allowed to laugh uh, they are not allowed to do this or that uh, he, they all mentioned that they all want to go to this parties they uh, they also want to enjoy they also want to dance so this is how they um, explain that uh, they want revised culture activities leisure activities that they perceive by themselves i'm going to break in for a second whoops because i was at another such discussion there were um, different ones of us and in both of these issues what we saw the reason it's so general is that there were different points of view so the text is what was finally agreed because there were yes. professors who said yes we must participate in this way I think Sposhmai was also in that discussion, as long as it can be verified according to the Hadith of Holy Quran, and that there were differences even within the faculty that they felt should be uh, subject to expanded discussion. Similarly, yeah. amongst women, the obligation to pray and the obligation to serve were for some a contradiction and for other a joy and a right that they thought would, they were being challenged to discuss further with our colleagues. I believe these discussions continue, Spojmai Jean, am I right? Yeah, yeah. In the uh, discussion that we had in the uh, faculty of Sharia, there was some differences. Some of the professors said that uh, 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 Muhammad, peace be upon him, had uh, uh, the, uh, some uh, uh, practices with, uh, her, uh, with his wife, uh, uh, for example, in sports. Uh, and some of them had different views. So we had uh, these different views, but uh, uh, only in some discussion, but all of the participants, uh, this was not the view of all of the participants. Thank you very much for that. We have uh, another couple of questions, which I think um, touch on the same area, which is, you know, what does what do the results of this study offer to those who want to intervene for um, humanitarian programs providing MHPSS um, in, in Afghanistan? Um, what are the kinds of uh, activities that it suggests? Um, and, and one uh, colleague asked, uh, do you see integrating MHPSS activities with social cohesion um, could respond to the results of the study uh, where you bring participants to MHPSS activities from different ethnic backgrounds uh, to feel the sense of togetherness? Um, and another colleague asks about whether there's a, this sort of work can really help contextualize our standard international language linked to MHPSS. Um, so the question really is, how should this be used? How will it, how should it change the way that people work in Afghanistan to address issues of well-being? about the use of uh, uh, this research finding. Uh, I think one of the usages. No, buffer my Ustad. Ustad, 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 از این استفاده بکنیم نهادهای دیگه چطور میتونن استفاده بکنن یک نفر دیگه هم یک سوال کرده که تحصیلات تحصیلات مثلا در بر لاوی که یک مدل ما با دیپارتمنت چی ساختیم مشاوره چطور ما میتونیم این تطبیق بکنیم در بخش های دیگه یا بخش های دیگه چطور میتونن از این نتیجه از این تحقیق استفاده بکنن <تصفيق> جواب 
I think that one of the usage of this, the result of this uh, study is uh, the big uh, point is the glossary. Uh, for example, in our research work and in the, our practical work with students and with clients, uh, we are using the terms from Western books and from Western materials. So now I think the best the result of this study is the uh, finding that we found our own glossary and our own terms for uh, well-being. And in further research and in our work with clients, we can use our own uh, glossary for the well-being. And I think this is the one of the biggest uh, points of this study that in Afghanistan, we define well-being from the point of view of Afghans and how Afghans use what terms they used for the well-being. And uh, these are the one of the biggest. And the next uh, sentence, uh, next, next question, um, Maria Mahmadi will answer. Uh, yes, also I think uh, uh, beside the Kabul University Counseling Center used the uh, glossary and terminology for uh, understanding their clients um, uh, mental health conditions and mental health situation. Also, we can use the terminology in other um, uh, uh, contexts of Afghanistan, uh, NGOs and other um, organizations that are working for uh, psychosocial well-being. They also can use this terminology because uh, this terminology uh, express and explain the um, uh, well-being condition of Afghans. And uh, for, uh, uh, this uh, glossary and this terminology help as uh, our uh, clients' um, uh, mental health situation. And also when we uh, see our clients that express that they are not feeling good and they are not uh, feeling comfortable and they are not feeling secure and they are not feeling uh, um, in peace, uh, then we can uh, imagine and we can understand that our clients suffering from uh, a lack of uh, mental health and uh, social, uh, psychosocial well-being. I think the glossary and the terminology will help uh, counselors and other practitioners uh, that they can use them and understand the, in their client's situation and their well-being. Um, Rohina Shah, Ananda, do you want to repeat the part about uh, social cohesion and Rohina can translate so that Professor Mariam can discuss that issue? Yes, the question was, um, as an action um, uh, responding to the results of the study, do you see that integrating MHPS's activities with social cohesion activities uh, could, could be something uh, suggested? Uh, and the example of this is where you bring participants from different ethnic backgrounds to shared MHPS's activities to feel a sense of togetherness. Rohini Shan, can you translate a bit? Because it's, yeah. I'm worried it's, is that clear, Mariam? Um, or yeah. is it better that Rohini Shan will translate and then you will respond? Yes, yes, it will, it's good. Rohini Shan? Can you translate for that question? I will repost it also in the chat. Oh. Yeah, 
So the question, Rohina Jean, I think what the what the questioner wants to know is would it be a good idea? Do they recommend that they could use because of these results? Could they use mental health and psychosocial support activities as a way to bring together Afghans of different ethnicities or beliefs, like they did in the study, to do some mental health activities or psychosocial support activities? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I, I got it. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Marta, for explanation. <laughs> Um, yes, I think it's possible that uh, uh, with the MHPSS activities, uh, psychosocial support, uh, we could gather uh, uh, different ethnicities uh, with different backgrounds uh, together. And uh, we traveled uh, 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 four uh, provinces in Afghanistan. And the participants were from different ethnicities with different languages and with different backgrounds. But they could gather to each other with each other and they could uh, explain uh, very clearly to each other. They uh, had this um, uh, opportunity uh, to talk with each other. Um, uh, uh, and uh, they were from different backgrounds, from different. Uh, um, uh, family background, uh, economic background, ethnic background, but they gather to each other with each other and they um, explain their feeling very clearly without any uh, comment each other. They, the result shows that they could gather and they could participate in MHPSS activities. Thank you very much. For, for persevering and answering that question. We have a very different kind of question now. Um, a colleague asks um, about the, the glossary of terms or the, the indicators of well being and says that it focuses a lot on external or social factors that contribute to well being. Were there also discussions around internal or personal factors that contributed to increased well being? Um, uh, if my colleagues have some uh, comments, uh, I will uh, uh, let them. But I think that um, the domains uh, um, clearly explain uh, some parts of uh, personal uh, well-being that they feel uh, well. Uh, for example, um, a woman in the study uh, said that when I am um, uh, when I'm going for shopping, when I'm uh, going to my colleague, and when we gather, um, uh, we will uh, we uh, feel good and we feel feel um, uh, well. Uh, and also, uh, I think Professor Uria will add something because uh, she. Um, explain the domains. I think in the domains, there are uh, some subjective uh, domains that uh, participants explained uh, in their uh, very personal, they feel good. Uh, yeah, as you said, uh, most of the domains are, uh, are mostly social. But during the discussion, we found and, uh, that one of the uh, results of this study was the, the glossary. In the glossary, uh, they uh, talked about their feelings. Feelings were, well. for example, they, uh, they said that uh, uh, they, uh, they feel calm when they are, there is no, no war. They feel calm when there is no uh, discrimination in the family. Uh, they feel calm and uh, uh, when there is no discrimination between uh, gender or between uh, men and women in the family. So uh, mostly they, uh, they express their, uh, their inner feelings 
uh, and the way of uh, in the terms of calmness, uh, happiness, uh, uh, feeling free, uh, and we found in Dari uh, that expression like rahat, like uh, hush, uh, ha uh, or happy, rahat or calm, and uh, uh, so uh, as I said, one of the challenges was that they had pro had problem in expressing their inner feelings. Uh, so in expressing their inner feelings, uh, they had a very little uh, literature or very little uh, uh, words for expressing their inner uh, feelings. But we found that glossaries and most of the glossaries are related to their uh, inner uh, well-being. I'm going Thank to you. break in uh, here for Marta a minute. Kana. Please, Marta. Yeah, just to make it summarized for the English version. So yeah. in the glossary, which we could share, the Dorian Pashtu, you will hear things like, my heart wanted to break out and I could fly. So there were expressions of feeling that were associated with the idea of well-being. However, and this is something that is very important for the way that MHPSS has been handled in Afghanistan and I think many other conflict countries. They were saying that these feelings are often dependent upon external circumstances. It is not that they have depression and they need a pill to feel joy. It is that when they go out and they are going to work in the university or when they go out as a Red Cross volunteer to help in an emergency, they may be, uh, they may be put in danger. They may be harmed or when they come back and these things may affect the way the family relations are because when there is outside danger, it affects how family love can be expressed. These are complex ideas and hard to contain within a research study, but it did indicate that, that what people were asking for was to get to these feelings. They don't need a medical treatment, but a serious discussion of their lives and living conditions. Thanks for that, Martha. It did occur to me that in many ways, uh, the, the kind of framing even in the domains was very much, uh, you know, encapsulated the notion of the psychosocial. Um, the indicator contained in some instances both a social context, but then a psychological or inner condition. Um, so thank you very much um, for taking the time and for this, this really uh, interesting piece of work and for sharing your uh, your your um, your thoughts with us. We are just uh, two minutes out out of time, so I'd just like to close. Um, if we could have the last slide, please, uh, just um, to thank you all, uh, particularly the the colleagues from the the research team for for your inputs, uh, and ask you ask that you uh, those of you who were able to stay with us until the end that you take uh, the exit survey we will speak with the team and if it's possible to share the presentation we will upload it to the um, mhpss.net group for this we will also hopefully be able to share your publication from this work when it comes out uh, which i understand a colleague uh, uh, mentioned this in the chat um, and uh, and we hope perhaps to hear more from you on this work as you take it forward um, thank you very much from from uh, on behalf of the uh, the working group uh, and mhpss.net. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Thank Sophie. you also. Okay. Also, uh, sorry. Uh, I want to say uh, a little word on uh, behalf of the doctor, professor, doctor. Sharifi, professor, doctor Sharifi. And we, we are thankful from all of you, all of organizers, especially from Dr. Martha, Dr. Ananda Bilapati, and all listeners, presenters, um, and on, on 
the people who work in this seminar. We are thankful, thanks a lot. And uh, we hope to have uh, another webinar such as this seminar. Okay. We hope so too. Thank you so much, Professor Siddiqui. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And, and everyone, please take the, the, the um, uh, survey, exit survey, and, and let us know um, what you thought as well. And we'll share your feedback with the team. Thank you. Thank you.